Headquarters has you covered all morning long. Jen Carfagno and Dr. Greg Postel are here with a look at what's coming up at 9 a.m. Um, you guys are going to have a look at the week's past present and future? Yeah, we got a lot going on today. Fridays are busy. Fridays are busy. This one jam-packed. We're going to be talking about the Northeast storm with a, what Jim was saying, all kinds of rain. But then early next week, severe weather oh, coming severe, back yeah. into the central right, plains. That's right. a big story. Yeah, that could be a significant event. So we'll have more on that coming up here. The possibilities for Monday and Tuesday. Plus, we're going best thing about New York. That's our state. I'm week. still on the eclipse high. I know. And I can't get enough of the pictures. I know, me too. And I, I just, the flares, getting those close-up images. Maybe, maybe the eclipse is the best in state. Good morning, everyone. We are here with you through the mid-morning hours to get you ready for all the big events in your neighborhood. The Weather Channel has you covered from coast to coast. And Greg, it was all about the tornado yesterday in Florida. Yeah, the tornado that we were tracking yesterday through North Florida now rated an ear. And clearly it did. Yeah. Was that one that moved on shore as a water spout or did it actually come across land? This is they all originated though right. over the Gulf of Mexico, right. but it moved all the way, all mm -hmm. the way across. Wow, Indeed. scary time. Yeah. Well, we can show you now um, how that skyline looked yesterday. I mean, very ominous. Uh, you saw the darkening. Look, it, it was very obvious on radar as well as some of the sky views that we were watching here. And, you know, thankfully everyone seemed to take cover and, you know, I think there was okay. one injury report, right? There was right? an injury here, yeah, yeah. but thankfully no fatality. Right. This kind of shot is characteristic of tornadoes in the deep south, in particular in Florida, with mm -hmm. so much moisture around. They're sometimes real hard to see. Mm -hmm. I think that was also the case yesterday, although we did get a glimpse of it. Mm -hmm. You can see that on the horizon. But you know what? Storm and flood threats pepper today's big deal. So let's see where we are with the rainfall and the wind that we have out there at the moment in the Boston area. Things are you're still a little bit showery. The winds are going to be our bigger deal as we get through the afternoon. Look at Boston drying out, but these winds gusting 30, 40, even 50 miles an hour. There could be some damage just from the winds alone, not necessarily because of thunderstorms, but just a very windy day. So right now, as we look at the Northeast, we're kind of uh, really seeing the showers lift up through the Boston area. It's a wet commute for you at the moment. We've got showers out there in Providence as well. Eastern Pennsylvania saw one lightning strike there in northern Jersey, and that's a possibility, you know, maybe some lightning. But I think overall the rainfall, which could still be heavy at times, is going to be a challenge for us out here, especially up into New England where we have snowpack on the ground. That flash flood warning that I saw pop up right up there into northern New Hampshire, that's because of the rain plus the wind causing some rapid snow melt. And so that's the, the reason for the flash flood concern, not necessarily just because of the rainfall, the rapid snowmelt happening top end of 93 up towards Berlin, New Hampshire. Again, watching for that. And then the rainfall, of course, here is still with us. And we see that heavy at times in northern Maine. Now, let's look at the showers in Cleveland and Columbus and Pittsburgh, where winds are gusting to 30. Buffalo winds are gusting to 45 miles per hour. What a blustery day we have out here, to say the least, and kind of raw with the rain coming down. Though, I'll tell you, temperatures aren't that cold. It feels very spring-like, actually, in the northeast. It's just that the rain is coming back in after... Uh, a wet March and now a very wet April. Pittsburgh, if we didn't get another drop of rain for the rest of the month, we would still have our third wettest April on record. And we're the wettest, we're tracking the wettest to date. So, you know, Pittsburgh, more rain coming your way today. Not necessarily good news. There are some schools that are on delay or closed, not necessarily the Pittsburgh School District, but some of the suburbs because of all the rain and the flooding that you had overnight. And as we watch this whole system still with us on Saturday afternoon, May end is a little bit of snow out there in parts of western New York and the wind. Of course, the wind is going to be with us here all day long today with wind advisories in effect. Also left a trail of damage from, I mean, it started off in Texas, Louisiana, stretching all the way to Florida over the last couple of days. Recovery efforts remain, and we've got more rain and thunderstorms to deal with across the southeast, but at least the southern plains will be clearing out today. But look at all the reports kind of starting up Wednesday right here in Texas, moving across Louisiana, Mississippi, dropping tornadoes there and wind and just a couple of reports of hail. But as you can see, we did have about 18 tornado reports, a stretch from Texas all the way to the first coast in Florida. So, you know, this is the time of year we ramp up severe weather as we're now into mid-April. Typically, we peak in tornado reports going into the month of May. But as far as the enhanced Fujita scale for St. Johns County, Florida, EF1 means winds of 100 miles per hour and on the ground for about 6.7 miles here. So kind of a scary time, I know. And even when you didn't get a tornado, we had some really strong winds blowing across the northern parts of Florida. EF2 is even stronger here in Slidell, Louisiana. 
Louisiana. This, of course, happening uh, back on Thursday or Wednesday, I should say, with a length of 9.34 miles, 120 mile per hour winds doing a lot of damage, a lot of destruction, a lot of cleanup going on here over the next couple of days. And thankfully, the weather will cooperate, not just today, not just the weekend, but beyond. Even into Monday and Tuesday, we get a nice lull in the action, that is for sure. In terms of where we stand uh, for tornadoes so far this year, we've had 281 reports. It's just a little bit below the average of 301. But notice that white line being our average, it does ramp up as we go into the next month or two. So this is really just the beginning of severe season. Thankfully, today it's a good cleanup day, picking up sticks, cleaning up flooding and mud that may have gotten into your home. We've got beautiful weather, New Orleans over towards Jacksonville, high surf and high rip currents, by the way. I was just checking out the Tampa area where yesterday at the airport, Greg, we had a gust to around 59 miles per hour. Yeah, windy times, Kelly. We can show you what that looks like on the water vapor. Look at this thing taking the big deep dive out here. <coughs> Excuse me, all the way down here. So it is going to allow some cooler temperatures to come in too, and that will, of course, give us some snow in, in the mountain areas. But I think most importantly, it brings some rain. Already seeing the moisture come on shore in Oregon and into parts of Washington. And as we watch here, the system swing on out, it could actually trigger some thunderstorms as we get through today. So here's a look at where the rain is right now. There's not a lot uh, north of uh, Medford, perhaps a couple of showers. Eugene, it's possible some showers today. But overall, as we get through the next two, days we see more activity today maybe a few thunderstorms getting into eastern Oregon and to parts of Idaho including around Boise tomorrow we could see that risk of storms yet again into parts of Oregon so let's look at how this plays out with rainfall you'll see this start to really build up through tonight now we get the rain more steadily in places like Medford and Eugene. We get showers up towards Lewiston. We're going to be watching for a couple of chances of getting those rain showers out there. Bend, Burns, and Oregon all see that into your Saturday. Again, we could see a couple thunderstorms out here. It's possible. You'll see how they're kind of be isolated in nature. And then we watch that whole energy kind of swing in through the weekend. So that's going to drive some rain showers in and around the Bay Area, southward through Southern California. We'll see some showers around San Jose. This is now your forecast here starting later today. Tonight, rain spreading down on the coast, Sacramento. Uh, we get some rain Saturday. Could be a really rainy morning for you. Tough for some of those farmers markets that you might be going out to. And snowfall will be adding up to Kelly. Hopefully uh, it, uh, it'll be above the past level to have some of the, the biggest issues there. Yeah, mainly yeah. above 6,000 feet is what I saw. San Fran, by the way, ground delay program going into effect for you today due to the weather that Jen just talked about. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot of problems are really here into the northeast where we've got the rain, the wind causing some issues for us. Not just delays, but we're talking ground stuff stops at a few airports actually. So we're going to kind of take a look closer look at the conditions here for LaGuardia, Newark, uh, even down towards Philadelphia with the thunderstorms around low ceilings for some of you causing the issues as well. And for some of you, it's also a crosswind like the Long Island Expressway, the Southern State Parkway, Northern State. This is where you have a wind coming in off the water and those gusts along the east end of I-95 are going to be at least 40 miles per hour, making for a rather bumpy flight. That is for sure for those flights that do get off the ground because as I mentioned, we do have ground stops for Philly, Newark, and LaGuardia. There's your wind, your turbulence showing up as well across northern New England. Um, even that lighter blue, it's a bit of a bumpy flight. So, you know, if you're not kind of used to that sort of thing, make sure you have the medicine uh, down into West Virginia. It's going to be later on this evening where we see some of those higher turbulence reports coming on through. So for today, the I-70 corridor being impacted as well as Detroit, where, of course, uh, your Tigers got rained out yesterday. They're going to play ball again tonight. And there's your wet weather along the west coast where i5 and yes even that severe weather potential over eastern cast east of the cascades in oregon into idaho and northern nevada jen travels I feel like tracks has a job he could be a roving uh tornado yeah, siren. my dog penny would not be doing that she might bark at the tornado siren i don't know i like, don't hear them too often that's right to harmonize yeah hard to harmonize exactly <laughs> very cute though all right well kelly i Good day for you to be on the show. I know. I just found out this morning when I walked in the door, you guys are discussing lakes in New York. Yes, we are. That's like my favorite thing. See, people underestimate just how powerful that water is. And, of course, on Tuesday right here in New Orleans, this school bus driver, the route was underwater, and they still drove right through the flooded roads. A dangerous decision, that's for sure. Meteorologist Alex Wilson shows us how to be safe when those waters rise.
All right, we are concerned about flooding, rising water due to melting snow. Remember that nor'easter we had not that long ago? We still have the snow melting and going into the nearby creeks and streams. Along with that, you've got the rain coming down on saturated ground, and that's only going to lead to more problems here in the northeast, where a lot of us are dealing with surpluses when it comes to rain of over a half a foot, some of you over seven inches. And we've got another one to two inches of rain on the way. Yes, there will be some cold air, pretty limited, though, across the hilly terrain, the higher elevations where we could see a bit of snow out there as well. Now we've got the windy conditions, especially along the coastline, interacting with the surface of the ocean. So that's going to push that seawater right ashore here across portions of Delmarva, eastern Virginia, down into North Carolina, where we do have coastal flood advisories and for some of you warnings with inundation of about a foot to a foot and a half in some locations. All right, let's look ahead to the weekend now with Jen and Greg. Yes, from a good with uh, the weather for you here mm -hmm. at the Masters. They had to end for darkness yesterday, so we'll finish up round one today. So Masters weekend is really the one weekend of the year where I can really do absolutely nothing but watch the Masters. <laughs> and I did that yesterday. I'm going to do it again yeah. today. The weather today, much better than yesterday. Yeah. Still a little but, windy. But the wind is going to make it real hard for the players. I mean, wind was a factor yesterday. Yeah. Uh, it was difficult. I'll call it difficult conditions yesterday. So let's look at how, where the wind is coming from and how it's going to affect you here on the 13th hole. Mm -hmm. A strong west wind, 15, maybe 20 mile per hour plus and cutting right across. So they tee off down there, Greg. Um, the wind might actually help get them over the trees, though, right? Yeah, it's real tricky, though, yeah. because there's such tall trees there. The wind at 100 feet is doing something much different than the wind at 20 feet. So when you're creating these yeah. shots, you got to count for it all. Very gotta difficult. Account. It's going to make it really challenging today. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, well, I'm no expert golfer, but I really don't know how you would play that with the wind and the trees and everything else in that on that particular it's hole. It's the wind shear. We talk about that yes. with severe weather. It's yeah. also a problem for us golfers. <laughs> yes. Well, Saturday and Sunday look better, though. Wind will be calmer. Temperatures heat up by Sunday, oh. 85 degrees. It's yeah. going to be hot. Make sure you hydrate with uh, adult beverages, maybe. We'll see. Who knows? Uh, maybe a little uh, tea and lemonade. Tea and All lemonade right. for Jen. Boston Marathon on Monday. It is Marathon Monday. This forecast looks great. Who couldn't? Uh, right. This is the, like the perfect yeah. marathon weather. Right around 60, uh, a little bit of a breeze, and you know, partly cloudy skies. And no rain in the forecast. Right. We had rain last year. Going back over the last several you know, recent years, we've had rain a few times but this looks like a pretty good one, both temperature and precip wise. Yeah, and while lots of folks may be looking forward to the weekend. Where we are with all this rain in the Northeast, I mean, it's been a tough two days here, especially for us in Detroit. Yeah, yesterday. this game got rained out yesterday. They couldn't play try. ball. They're going to try this one. I mean, I don't know if that forecast looks too promising. I don't know if they ever canceled due to just winds, but you've got the rain involved as yeah. well. Oh, the wind is going to be tough. You know, showers out there aren't a guarantee necessarily, but they're going to be around. And the kind of weather that's really difficult to kind of pinpoint when the shower is going to be there, you know, yeah. I'm spinning underneath this upper level. And it's on both sides of that low. Yeah. You've got different wind directions, though. So on this side of the low, it's a southerly wind bringing all that moisture in from the Atlantic, from Boston to Cape Cod. I mean, look at these gusts. Yeah. Nantucket, over 40 miles an hour. Hold on to that steering wheel there in Boston. 35 gusts, but a steady wind at 22. And a decent plume of moisture coming in there. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to keep an eye on heavy rainfall. These showers will be a little bit lighter, but this comes on very saturated ground after yesterday's rain. So showers in Cleveland, showers heading Ooh. back to Pittsburgh. Buffalo, 33, gusting to 45. You need that umbrella, hopefully not going inside out. I know. With that rain coming down. And yes, there's a bit of blue showing up here, Jen. It's mainly going to be the hilly terrain up across yeah. the higher elevations, but primarily rain. One to two inches can be expected. April rain, or April snow is the worst. <laughs> um, we've got showers out there today of mainly the rain variety across Ohio and West Virginia. More coming back into Maryland, too. And Somerset, uh, Somerset Maryland is one of the spots that have some kids on remote learning today oh, because really? of, of flooding. I mean, so much weather over the past 36, 48 hours. Pittsburgh got inundated. We had a yeah. flash flood emergency yesterday, more rain coming through later this morning or late tonight, I should say. Through tonight into tomorrow, you've got the rain through the Mohawk Valley Capital District, and there's your snowflake activity showing up in the blue, mainly, again, the higher elevations. And then you think it clears out by Saturday night, but we've got another thing coming through on Sunday. Wind advisory for today. So windy across lower Michigan. It's going to be windy across northern Indiana and Ohio. And, you know, it really is going to be windy everywhere, but just kind of reaching advisory levels in those spots. Today happens to be National Big Wind Day. Oh, is it? just it? happens to be. I just right. looked it up. Mount Washington, <laughs> you, can, uh, you can celebrate. And there's your coastal flood concern as well. But Greg, we need to look ahead to the next system because we could see a lot of ramp up later today into tonight. You can see it on the water vapor. I mean, look at this big old dip that we've got out here. This is going to be the energy that moves into the west here. It swings on in, helps encourage rising air and rain and showers and maybe even some thunderstorms. Already see some showers out there. Not quite in Portland yet, but maybe in the area and down along coastal Oregon. A few showers out there. 
there. Everyone else sitting pretty good right now. But later today, there may be some thunderstorms. Watch that across Oregon into Idaho, uh, more into Oregon tomorrow. And this is the kind of weather system when you get these upper level lows that move in. Sometimes they can create some small hail, um, maybe even an isolated tornado. It's possible. So just beware that we could have that kind of weather coming in. It'll be isolated, but not impossible. You see the showers forecast out here as you get through the day today and tomorrow right across Oregon. Again, very isolated in nature, but not non-existent. So we got to watch out for that. Some of the rain will be heaviest along the coast of Oregon down into California. That's kind of where the core of the system moves in. And we see rainfall moving into you tonight into the Bay Area. Showers down around San Jose. Rainfall tomorrow in Sacramento and through the Central Valley. Look at all this rain coming in overnight tonight and continue. So tomorrow morning you're making your plans to go out to the farmer's market and uh, do the other uh, you know Saturday morning errands. There's going to be rain out there and by Sunday it swings all the way down through Santa Barbara. Los Angeles getting some showers out there um, scattered and even San Diego possible. We get a few raindrops, but not as much as up to the north. Now rainfall could be heavy at times with about two to three inches in spots, especially in some of those upslope areas. Snowfall six to 12 inches, maybe above about 6,000 feet is where we're looking for that. But Yosemite could be impacted. So heads up with that. Is part of your weekend plans. San Francisco rain for you coming in late tonight and then tomorrow, Saturday night, but then ending by Sunday and we're dry Sunday and Sunday night. Now, Kelly, out ahead of this, we might have some winds and fire concerns. We need that higher danger. And if we look at the million, you know, 0.7 acres that have been burned so far this year, a lot of that was just due to that terrible state record fire that was in northern Texas. Remember that one a couple of months ago? And you can see we've already surpassed all of last year, and we've already more than doubled our 10-year average of 563,000 acres. So this is a concern, especially here where you see the darker shades of orange on the map, Del Rio, in that red flag warning up into southeast. Eastern Colorado, also into New Mexico and getting into extreme northwestern panhandle of Texas. It's an elevated danger for today, and it's also elevated for quite a huge swath of the area, stretching from the central and southern plains all the way down to Roswell, New Mexico. And you can see Monday, we still have even critical fire danger that we're concerned about with the low relative humidity and those strong gusty winds that are in our forecast. So as we take a look at elevated, this is when the brush and grass fires, they spread small fires are easier to control but once we get into that critical territory the fires start easily and spread rapidly and more difficult to control extreme fire danger obviously we up it even more to a dangerous category low relative humidity typically starts us off in the morning with humidity but then we dry things out as we mix out the atmosphere in the middle of the day uh, but right in the middle of the day that is actually when you have the strongest winds typically so as we go through this evening or Saturday evening even into Sunday and Monday we still still have the very dry air to contend with, along with those very strong gusty winds, Jen. Guys will soon clear out. Choose the best one for you and your family. Well, joining us right now, Carol, and I love the lakes there. So tell us a little bit about the different lake regions and what makes them so special, you think? Yeah, I mean, New York is just blessed with some of the most beautiful. 7,600 lakes, wow. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your favorite lake getaways? Do you don't you mentioned also you know in the winter time you've got ice fishing and you've got, I've actually seen planes land on a lake up in the Adirondacks it's so cool. Oh yeah, I mean there's so many interesting things uh, in New York. You know, if I mean you've you've had by sure uh, sold us, but is there anything else you think deserves an honorable mention when it comes to the state of New York? Yeah, we start I know, making I that plan <laughs> any time of year. Yeah, like come you on said. by, come on by. Yeah. Ross Levi, Executive Director, Director of I Love New York, thank you so much for joining us with some great options. Yeah, I love, I have to say again, I love the series, Best in State. Every Friday, all year long, we're going to highlight the top spot in all 50 states. And Kelly, it keeps surprising me what we end up picking, too. Yeah, and by the way, you guys can participate at yes. home as well on social. Use the hashtag Best in State to share the best thing about your state. And next up, we're going to be visiting Rhode Island, which I've actually been to before, Newport. Newport. Went to a wedding there. And it was a beautiful reception area with, you know, floor to ceiling windows and was fogged in that day. Oh, couldn't see a thing. Well. We have a look back at Monday's big event, Texas to Maine in just under four minutes.
truly unbelievable. Just so amazing. I love that that montage was in just under four minutes because totality for some places was right around that time between three and four minutes. Yeah, that was the max. Now, if that inspired you to witness the next solar eclipse in person, uh, you've got some time to plan. You're going to need to grab your passport for the next several total eclipses. They'll all be overseas. How about this location right here? Can you guess where that is? Yeah, Iceland. Iceland, yes. The next total solar eclipse set to happen on August 12th, 2026 over Greenland, portions of Iceland, Spain, Russia, part of uh, Portugal as well. Mm -hmm. How cool would it be to see an eclipse over a volcano? I mean, it's just a small part of Iceland, but it happens to be the part of Iceland that you're going to want to go to anyway. That and you sometimes they get to. the northern lights, too. Oh, gosh. What about that? Wouldn't that be amazing to have it all in one trip? Oh, the eclipse will be passing right over the beaches of Mallorca and Ibiza. You know, the beach is a nice spot to watch an eclipse. There aren't mm -hmm. many uh, things to maybe obstruct your view of the sky. And one thing I like about Mallorca is there's a lot of mountains. You can yes. kind of get up high. And That's if you get true. up high enough, you can actually watch the shadow move. Just camp out or something. Yeah, you can watch And the after move. that, Jen, the next eclipse has us headed down under to Australia, New Zealand. The total solar eclipse of 2028 will be the second of five eclipses in 15 years for Australia. This would be another cool spot. Yeah. Parts of New Zealand, including here in Queenstown, will experience totality close to sunset. So you get the 360 sunset, right. and then you'll get the sunset in the western sky. And the opposite season of what we're in here in the northern hemisphere. Yeah. All that going on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Finally, uh, the total solar eclipse back here in North America in 2044. Now, on August 23rd that year, the path will only kind of touch us in the U.S. states, North and South Dakota and Montana. But there will be another event in 2045 that will be possible to witness from coast to coast across the U.S., a city like Orlando. How about right over Disney World? Yes. Being in totality right there, that's going to be amazing. A lot of Florida will be in 2045, yeah. so I'm, I'm planning ahead to that one. And maybe Happy Friday. Friday, everyone. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. We are here with you through the mid-morning hours to get you ready for all the big events in your neighborhood. And the Weather Channel has you covered from coast to coast. Now, the tornado we were tracking through North Florida yesterday rated EF1, mm -hmm. and it was pretty clear on radar mm -hmm. when we were tracking mm -hmm. it that it was doing damage. It had all those signatures. Yeah, we were watching the reflectivity, and it matched up with where we saw on the velocity uh, that risk of rotation. Was there damage being detected as and well? And then that matched mm -hmm. the well. debris. Mm -hmm. Yep. And this was one of those things where it's a classic mm -hmm. southern U.S. Mm -hmm. coastal tornado event where you don't see it very clearly. There's a lot right. of humidity and clouds in mm -hmm. the area. A lot of trees, too. It looks trees. Like. A lot of trees, yeah. And it came over, you know, pretty populated area. So, unfortunately, there was damage. There was a lot to clean up. But, thankfully, there were no fatalities. Yeah, just one injury being reported from that. Yep, thankfully so. And, you know, the storm and flood threats pepper today's big deal. Truly unbelievable. Just so amazing. I love that that montage was in just under four minutes because totality for some places was right around that time between three and four minutes. Yeah, that was the max. Now, if that inspired you to witness the next solar eclipse in person, uh, you've got some time to plan. You're going to need to grab your passport for the next several total eclipses. They'll all be overseas. How about this location right here? Can you guess where that is? Yeah, Iceland. Iceland, yes. The next total solar eclipse set to happen on August 12th, 2026 over Greenland, portions of Iceland, Spain, Russia, part of uh, Portugal as well. How cool would it be to see an eclipse over a volcano? I mean, it's just a small part of Iceland, but it happens to be the part of Iceland that you're going to want to go to anyway. That you sometimes will be they get to. the northern lights, too. Oh, gosh. What about that? Wouldn't that be amazing to have it all in one trip? Oh, the eclipse will be passing right over the beaches of Mallorca and Ibiza. You know, the beach is a nice spot to watch an eclipse. There aren't mm -hmm. many uh, things to maybe obstruct your view of the sky. And one thing I like about Mallorca is there's a lot of mountains. So you can yeah. kind of get up high. And That's if you get true. up high enough, you can actually watch the shadow move. Just camp out or something. Yeah, you can watch And the after that, move. Jen, the next eclipse has us headed down under to Australia, New Zealand. The total solar eclipse of 2028 will be the second of five eclipses in 15 years for Australia. This would be another cool spot. Yeah. Parts of New Zealand, including here in Queenstown, will experience totality close to sunset. So you get the 360 sunset, right. and then you'll get the sunset in the western sky. And the opposite season of what we're in here in the northern hemisphere. Yeah. All that going on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Finally, uh, the total solar eclipse back here in North America in 2044. Now, on August 23rd that year, the path will only kind of touch us in the U.S. states, North and South Dakota and Montana. But there will be another event in 2045 that will be possible to witness from coast to coast across the U.S., a city like Orlando. How about right over Disney World? Yes. Being in totality right there, that's going to be amazing. A lot of Florida will be in 2045. Yeah. So I'm, I'm planning ahead to that one. And maybe.